Hey guys, Dan here. Today I want to talk about a QR system I developed that will basically make any base and any steering wheel wireless. I mean, not technically wireless because we still have a wire, but not on the wheel. So this is made for the NRG QR. You probably know it from SimMagic, Moza, uh, Camus, AccuForce and, and many others. It's all the same principle. It's this NRG style. So for example, here, this is a SimMagic wheel side QR and this is an original NRG base side. And this basically will make any base wirelessly work with any wheel without having to connect a wire to the steering wheel. You will still have a wire. I mean, I don't know if you can see it here. It's, it's wired to the base side here. And so technically it's not a true wireless system, but uh, the positives are you have enough power. You do not have data connection issues that you have with the slip ring, for example. And if you just have to wire and route one cable, you can do it very cleanly, put it out of the way. For example, here, this just routes on top of the monitors. You still get all the rotation and everything. So I wouldn't have any concerns with that. But on the steering wheel side, you will not have any wire anymore and you can quickly change between wheels. So let's say, uh, I mean, it's not really a super useful use case here, but if you combine this quick release, with the SimHub control remapper, you can basically go out, drive a little bit, and then take off the wheel, put in the new wheel, and continue driving. Take some time till the display boots and everything, but yeah, you get the idea. It does work with every base and with every steering wheel that has USB, even the ones with power injector. But let me actually explain you a little bit how this works. So let's get out of the car. It consists of two pieces. Let's switch to this camera view. It is the base side, which is very, very simple. It's just a little board like this with the four USB signals. So we have power, we have the two data signals and we have ground. Uh, do not judge my use of hot glue here, but it's just like a little connector where your USB cable will connect. And I made a spacer for 70 millimeter where you can basically just inject any cable and then you connect it here for USB. I will also make a USB-C variant of this, which will make it a bit easier or maybe even one of a commercially available cable. I don't know yet. If you have any suggestions, join the Discord and ask me there. But yeah, you connect it here, ideally, with a power injector. You can also use 5 volt, but I would recommend to use a 9 or 12 volt power injector. I will also make a little board for that, but that's not finished yet. We have the, the base release of this, which is the base side board and the wheel side board for 5 volt wheels. So you do inject the USB here. It goes through the shaft. By the way, this is using the Fanatec, uh, how's it called? Club Sport DD Plus, whatever. The 50 newton meter base, very good base, by the way. So I hope the whole thing with Corsair and everything goes through and Fanatec can survive the whole thing because the base is, is really good, to be honest. Uh, I made a custom spacer for this. I can post the files as well on Discord if somebody's interested. But uh, this spacer here connects to a standard 70 millimeter spacer, whatever the cable goes through here. You can probably see it a little bit on the side. Yeah. And then connects to this. And it will either have 5 volt if you connect it directly to USB or it will have the power injector voltage, so typically 9 or 12 volt. For example, it works very well with the grid power injector. I am currently powering this with 15 volts because I want to see how it behaves in the extreme settings. It should work till 18 volts, I think. I need to double check, but I would recommend up to 12 volt. There's no wheel that needs more than 12 volts or whatever. And then we have another board that goes into the steering wheel here without the pogo pins. You probably have seen this concept from Moza or SimMagic and Camus and all the others. It's not a revolutionary new concept. Azatec uses pogo pins as well. Um, with the pogo pins mounted in the wheel, you can see it here. It's a little spring-loaded pin that will basically connect to these pads here and have the USB signal. And this is basically the, the, the non-plus ultra version of the board. If you want to buy this, it is about eight to nine dollars for one wheel, but more on that later. And what it has is a little USB chip to refresh the signal and give us a better signal quality. And it also has a power supply. And what does the power supply do? It takes the voltage it gets here. So in this case, the 15 volts 
and it will generate a clean 5 volt for the wheel. So in theory, you can power this with 5 volt, you can power it with 15 volts. The wheel will always work and this little board here will always generate the 5 volt that the wheel needs. So you don't have to worry that you destroy your wheel using the 15 volts here or so. I typically would recommend to use um, a power injector for this because then you do not have the voltage drop on the cable and that is the main issues for Vocors dropping out. You probably have seen it, you use a Vocor and then it will suddenly disconnect or the display will tear and like display something in the middle. At GSI we found several ways how to mitigate this but it's still like any Vocor, if you have one with like bad tolerances or so, is prone to that. So you want to have stable 5 volt as close to the uh, wheel electronics as possible. And with this, you can do it. Next question, how do you connect this thing to the wheel? Well, there are several possibilities. The easiest way, if there is like a hole in the wheel in the middle here, like the FPE, I think has one. So you can just take the USB signal from this little connector here and connect it to your wheel internally. On the Discord, if you have a wheel, if you do not know what to do, join the Discord, just ask there. Every wheel can be connected internally. On some, you may have to drill a hole to connect it internally to the USB connector if you do not want that. There's another solution. You can pretty much, this is like for a 50, 58, I don't know, a smaller QR, but you can put this here. This is a 3D printed spacer in between the QR. I mean, it doesn't fit now because it's, it's not the 70 millimeter version. But you basically put this on here and then you can just like route a cable through this slot, connect this internally and then this cable you could just connect to the regular USB uh, of the wheel. If you do not want to modify the wheel, if there is no through hole for this, uh, newer GSI wheels will have that, Cube Controls wheels will have that, Ush, the new Usher stuff has it. Uh, I would assume that more and more wheels should have it in the future because I think it's just the cleanest way to connect everything. But yeah, let's talk about the next thing. How can you get this? Am I selling it? No, I'm not selling it. Because like certifications and everything are a giant pain. Uh, there might be a solution in the future. At the moment, there is not. But I released all the files that you need to build one for yourself on my Discord in a premium channel that is available for YouTube members. And for Ko-Fi Ko Ko supporters, uh, I'll put the links in the description below. I'm not going to judge you if you just subscribe for one month for like four euros, grab the files and unsubscribe directly again. It's mainly to avoid that too many people build it at the same time. Please, uh, no commercial use for this. This is not allowed, but you can build as many as you want for your own use. So the next steps uh, is a version of this little board for nine volt wheels. Uh, I have a prototype that works with the with the grid wheels, for example. And also a little more basic version where the wheel side will not have the USB chip and it will not have the power supply chip that you can then only use via a USB cable, no power injector support. But just if you only have wheels with 5 volt and you do not need a power injector support, maybe you have a hub very close to the base, the voltage drop is typically not a problem for you, then you don't really need a power injector and 9 or 12 volt. All you need is like a USB cable to your hub and then basically the connection from the base to the wheel with no electronics. I'll make a version of that as well. It's not done yet. It's very simple. I'll probably post it next week, uh, which will be much cheaper to get. Will probably be like five, um, five boards for one dollar. How do you access it? Like I said, join the YouTube channel membership or become a Kofi supporter and then join the Discord. This is where all the files are, where all the discussions are. If you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, make sure to join the Discord and grab the files there. And I also quickly will show you how you can order the boards. All right, next go to active QR files on the Discord. Download this one here, DSAQR wheel 5 volt manufacturing data. Download the base manufacturing data. Um, here are also <clears throat> some alternatives for parts that might be out of stock, but uh, download the zip file, unzip it once, because like it's a zip file that contains another zip file, but you do not want to unzip the Gerber file. So it should look something like this when you unzipped it. It's the Gerber files, which is the data for the PCB. It's the bomb, which is the parts that go on the PCB and pick and place. It's the file that tells the machine which part goes where. So then go to add Add Gerber files, select this archive, let it upload. It should change layers to four. There we go. 33 by 33, 
will calculate it for 10 boards. Uh, you can leave all this default PCB color, pick one of your choice. Green is the cheapest, purple will make a lap time significantly faster, of course. Surface finish, hassle with lead is fine for private use. And since commercial use is not allowed, you can just keep this. It's the easiest to manufacture surface finish and also the cheapest one. If you don't want something with lead, then go to the lead free hot air soldering level or the gold, but uh, all of these will work just fine. You can leave everything else on default. Impedance control, go to yes, and then select the 3313, confirm. Everything else can be left on default. Then you wanna go to PCB assembly, assemble bottom side. We do not wanna assemble both because you need to play a little bit with those pogo pins. Solder these in yourself, it's very easy. I mean, if you do not want to do it, check the Discord of pogo pin uh, board combinations that people tried. This is the one that I am using. It works very well with the NRG base side and also with the Moza and Symagic base side, but you will have to order thinner boards depending on whether you use Symagic or Moza or NRG on that later. But for this, uh, just go bottom side, 10, Added by JLC, confirm part placement. It doesn't cost a lot, just put it to yes. It's like 43 cents if you're not sure. And then this is all default, go to, go to confirm. Then you see a view of the board again. Okay, looks good. Next, add bomb file. Again, select the bomb from the zip file. Add the CPL file. That is the pick and place file from the zip file. Then go to process bomb and CPL. And then you will see something like this. So this looks all good with the only thing that I just wanted to say Yankee one. I've been flying too much. <laughs> y1 is out of stock. And again, there will be a database alternatives for out of stock parts. You can see here Y1. You can use the part C9002. So just go here, go to search part paste that number in and you can see here we have a stock of 95,320 so if you need 95,000 uh, wheel side boards you can go with this select and that's pretty much it what does he have here no that's fine like in the design there's a 10 microfarad 16 volt part he chose a 25 volt part but as long as the footprint is the same footprint as this 0805 the voltage can be higher it doesn't matter it shouldn't be lower but it can be higher. And then same thing here, looks fine. If you're not sure, post on the Discord. There are a lot of helpful people that can help you out. Then we will go to next. We'll generate the PCB and the part placement. So this is the top side with no parts placed. So just go to the bottom side. And you wanna match the dots with the dots on the board. So the pink dot is the one from the from the part here just match it like this like this this one doesn't matter the rest also doesn't matter and you're good to go but also even if you do not do anything here or if you do it wrong with the confirm part placement option by jlc they will just fix it for you so then go next and here you can see the build time of the pcb is three days assembly four to five days so it takes about a week a little longer and it will cost you $84 for 10 boards. Product description, I would just go to DIY toy. I mean, in the end, I know people don't want to hear it, but I've had long discussions with the German customs about <laughs> sim racing steering wheels. It is a toy. So save to cart. And here we go. I also put in 10 boards of the base side already. I'll quickly go through the ordering process for that one as well. But as you can see, it's not expensive. Let's say you want to only do five. Then you pay 62. So if you want to organize a group buy on the Discord, that is fine with me. If you maybe like have other people that want one as well. But I wouldn't order too many first because it's still like a design that is in testing i mean i've used it for like half a year there are people that already built some and it works fine for them 
but do not order for your 200 wheels all at once. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, that's it for the wheel side. The base side is same principle. Go to instant quote, add Gerber files, download the base site. Go. Very dangerous download. Unzip. And then same principle. Upload it. And I typically do not do any assembly on this. You can also solder your wire directly to these pads or you can just solder the connector on top of it. If you want to have them assemble it, go ahead. It's not expensive. Let's say 10 boards. Um, and here for Simagic and Moza, for example, go with 1.6 PCB thickness. If you go with the original NRG, which I can recommend it. It's a bit more expensive. Like this is about 100 euros for this one here. It is a very good, like it is the highest quality cure. It has absolutely no play. I mean, even Moza, Simagic, and even the, the, the cheaper ones from AliExpress for like 40 euros are fine. They are not super, super play free, but definitely more than good enough. Like there are QRs out there that have significantly more play. I think Simacube, the QRs, it's not really that quick, but their QR is the most solid one. The Q1R is good, the Azatec QR is good, but I would say even the cheap AliExpress NRG clone is coming right behind that. If you get the NRG, big advantage, it comes with a 70mm base side. All the other ones like Moza, Simagic, many of the AliExpress clones come with a 58mm, so I would just recommend to buy one NRG. And... You want to get a PCB's thickness of one millimeter for that because then it matches the same height as the other ones and you can use the pogo pins that I posted. You can also go with 1.6 and just get shorter pogo pins. The more people that built it, the more knowledge we will have and the more information on the Discord. But yeah, one millimeter, there's uh, four as well, 1.6. Why did this jump to 70 euros? Ah build time you like i mean if you want to get it one day earlier for 62 dollars do it um five boards are two dollars you probably will not need 10 base sides uh you see the price it is very very cheap but yeah that's actually pretty much it if you want to build one for yourself join the youtube members or join the Kofi supporters uh, then you get access to the discord folder if you have any questions post it on the discord please do not send me a dm i will probably ignore you because i cannot give everyone support for this post it on the discord there's a lot of information in there already i will be active on the discord i will answer questions but i will not answer individual messages regarding that but yeah did i forget anything I don't think so. That is all I wanted to say about it. I'm excited for this project because why did I make it? I think QRs are just, first of all, too expensive. Second of all, no active connection inside. Cube Controls has something similar to this, but only with passive boards, no USB chip, no power supply. But if you do not want a DIY one, check out the one from Cube Controls maybe. Azatec has a similar concept on their bases, but with a little low power approach, only 5 watt. It can struggle sometimes with vocal screens and a lot of LEDs. But yeah, this is, you can probably build your own QR for 50 euros, including the QR hardware, if you buy one of the cheaper ones. And yeah, that's why I made it. I wanted to build an open ecosystem that works with every base, that works with every steering wheel, and that is not too expensive to make. But yeah, build one for yourself. Let me know uh, if it works for you and if you have any suggestions, any ideas, any questions or whatever, ask on the Discord. I'm very happy to help there. But yeah, that's it for the video. Thank you very much for watching. Have fun building this and I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye bye.